Welcome, GeoTrig. This is section 6-3, Proving a Quadrilateral is a Parallelogram. The essential question is, how can you prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? Let's begin. So you remember these properties from last section 6-2, uh, just different properties to identify a, a parallelogram or different properties of parallelograms? Well, we can flip those around and say any one of those properties can be used to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if the opposite sides are congruent, then we can say it's a parallelogram. If the consecutive angles are supplementary, it's a parallelogram. Same thing with opposite angles, and same thing with diagonals. So we, that's all we need to prove a parallelogram. Now, any, and so one other way to prove a parallelogram is this. So if one pair of opposite sides is of a quadrilateral is both congruent and parallel, then you have a parallelogram. So in this example, BC and AD are both congruent to each other and parallel, so we can say it's a parallelogram. So for example, if I, if I had this given, given information, I could prove a parallelogram by saying, well, both these sides are congruent, since they're both equal to 5, and these two angles right here are supplementary. Since these are supplementary, we can say that we, all, with same side interior angles are supplementary of parallel lines. So we can say AB is parallel to DC, because inter, same side interior angles so parallel lines, congruent lines, it's, supplement, it's a parallelogram. Right here we have a summary of the last two sections. It's basically six different ways to prove you have a parallelogram. The first one's a, something you learned in sixth grade, just opposite sides are parallel. The, last, the next four are the ones we learned last section, and this last one is the one you just learned in that last slide. All right, let's try an example. So pause the video. Actually, we just did this one. So once again, how can I prove this is a parallelogram? Well, we have AB is going to be congruent to DC because they're the same length. So you can say those sides are congruent. Well, since angle A is 50 and angle D is 60, uh, 130, we can say uh, angle A and angle D are supplementary because they add up to 180. And since those, if we treated AB as a line and DC as a line and AD as the transversal, we could say AB is parallel to DC because we can say same side interior of, of a transversal. So because of that, and I have these two properties, it is parallel, parallelogram. Next one, pause the video. All right, can you prove this is a parallelogram and explain it? All right, so I have a parallel sides, DE is parallel to FG, and I have DG equals EF. Well, I only have one parallel sides, a set of parallel sides, but I have different sides that are actually congruent, so I can't. I don't have enough information to use in any one of the six cases from this slide. So that's it, I think. Oh, we got one more. So pause the video. All right, can we prove this is a parallelogram? Well, looking at this thing, I got two angles. This angle is congruent with this one, and this angle is congruent with that one. Hmm. Well, we have some neat properties here. I have, I can actually say these two triangles are congruent. So watch. You have two triangles here. You got triangle LAN, and we got a second triangle. We can call it NDL. And they both share a same side, this LN, because of reflexive property. So we can say these two triangles are congruent by the angle side angle, because they got angle one, side one, angle two. Angle one, side one, angle two. So we got two congruent triangles. Because of that, we can say corresponding parts are congruent. So what I can say here is that AN is congruent to LD, AN and LD, because of corresponding parts. So make some tick marks. And I can also say AL is congruent to DN. So I'm going to do three tick marks. So AL is congruent to DN. ND doesn't matter. Same thing for corresponding parts. Well, going back to my properties up here, if we can, pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then we can say it's a parallelogram. I said this is congruent and this is congruent. Therefore, it's a parallelogram. So that's one way I could have done that. That's it.